we'll, we'll give you the same. It's all right. Okay? Pretend we're over there today. Okay, we're in and we're live. Okay, and we're going to have Jake. We can look at both like this, like diagonal. You can. Oh, okay. okay. No okay. All right, and you may begin. Konnichiwa, hello, shalom. These are all the things that people could learn through lessons for a cause. Okay, before I go to the next slide, I want to ask you, what what would you think your life would be like if you could not access education, if you could not go to school, if you could not learn the simplest of things like adding, subtracting, even talking? Anyone want to share? Um, I think that if I couldn't learn anything more that that would be pretty awful in the world today because that that's what helps me to be able to do what I enjoy doing okay anyone else respond to his question um, I think that'd be really bad for the world because then no one would be able to create stuff and Exactly why I chose this because I chose it because I cannot imagine life without education. I wouldn't be able to learn the simplest of things. I wouldn't even be able to live life because I wouldn't understand the world if I didn't have any education. What are my goals with this? My goal is to have a two-sided benefit. I want the users to learn something new, as well as the to raise money with this with this learning program. Every so often, I'm thinking of it being once a month. If they sign up, it'll raise ten dollars a month to local charity and I know that the, to a local con to a country to raise money for the education ha you, that may be a little bit of money you say but if the more people that use it that accumulates to more and more money what's it how to design thinking which is this this most of this presentation is going to be based off the steps of the, of design thinking the next slide is empathize. Well, the first, the second slide was empathize. Then the next is going to be define, idea, prototype. I didn't necessarily get to the test step, but that's going to be planned ahead for the future. Why did I, how do I define the problem? Well, I did research plus mental imagery. And the images that I have are background, are stuff that you might look up or find if you search education around the world. For example, Syrian children are not getting an education, which that is, with that, which that is not shown in the image, but I guess. Millions of children around the world have a lack of education. Some children have to travel extremely long distances just to get to school. Some children have to travel extremely long distances just, oh, typo, okay. But this, just, oh. Uh, but this project won't just specifically focus on Syria, but all over the world is my goal. Did you? Did I have any other ideas before? Any other goals before agreeing to this one? And what were they? Of course I did. As you can see, these are the family tree of ideas. I don't know what lorium ipsum is, but. 
typo. So I originally wanted to do water, food, and education, and then I narrowed down to just water and education. I forgot to have that step. And or no, no, water and education. So I have water and food, water and education, and then I just settled down on education. Mostly because Mr. Roth suggested that I that I focus on one specific element other than more than one, which I thank you for that to be able to make it so it'll get to at least a testing site. Because if I can't focus on one thing, how do I believe that many people would enjoy it if I don't just say on one thing, focus my mind on a narrower point of view? When did I come up with this idea? Last semester, which was the time when I did my UN project, which most of you know of. But since you got since more since all the since both the teachers don't know the UN project, we were basically symbolizing where we were a part of UN. And since we got to hear some of the other some education statuses around the world, we got to, this inspired me to do that. Also, my class read "I Am Malala," which, if you read it, you would know is a book all about this one girl with this one girl who fought for education in Pakistan and all around the world for girls. Did I come up with a prototype? Yes. So let me explain to you what the actual app will be. This is the main screen where what you could do is you click on these things and it will take you there. The first one, which is Japanese culture and learning Japanese, is one where you can learn more about Japanese culture, food, music, art, things like that. That's how you learn our purpose, which is over there. Which, it says, Lessons for a Cause is a learning program, exactly what I said before. And last but not least, Hebrew and Jewish culture, which you guys know from being at the school, but many other people around the world who are not at a Jewish school or a school in Israel may not know. So this app is supposed to teach them these things. And then I'm going to add other screens for the different learning ways and ways of learning. And there's also going to be a sign-up screen. So if they want to sign up for membership, which then donates the money, they will be able to do that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. Whoever. The live stream is a bit behind, so okay. we need to ask questions first. So any questions from the audience about this project? Mm. Yes. So what was your favorite aspect of researching like this project? Well, my favorite aspect of it was actually just coming up with the idea, because I wanted to take two things that I really enjoy, which is Israeli culture, mm -hmm. Hebrew, learning Hebrew. Also, I like Japanese music. I may not know a lot about the actual culture of music, and then I like to interpret that into an idea that I really wanted to do. So that, plus what I, that me being able to do something that I really enjoy with something really cool such as coding equals to a really good idea. Evan. Um. How how are you how are you gonna uh, bring the money to the people who need it like for education and stuff? Are you gonna get them? that? I'm not specifically sure about what I'm gonna do. I'm thinking of many possible solutions. I'm thinking of either a getting figuring out a, a organization that I can send it to, or give it to that's in America and can send it out to the other countries. B where I'm go where I could just go there and then find and then find some an organization there. Or C, I I was thinking maybe what we could do is I can use that money and then use it to bring teachers from America or other places around the world to the countries to teach them. So it wouldn't necessarily go directly necessarily to the schools, but to the teachers so they could teach over there. Um, how do you plan on collecting the money? How do you plan on getting the money to get to them? So you know how when so you mean collecting the money that I will then give to them? Yeah. Okay, so you know how with Netflix and those streaming things, or YouTube, if you buy premium, or any of those premium games, how you sign up and then every so often you put, they take get some money from you from your bank account when you sign up, 
and then they just collect the money and it goes to them, right? It almost is going to work like that, except for it's not going to stay with with my business. It's going to go out to the other countries who need education. Okay. Harrison. Um, what motivated you? What like, encouraged you to make this your project? I, well, I explained this in my second slide, the education, me without education, my life would be horrible. And I cannot, ma and life would be, would suck in a country where I can access that, not because of myself, not because of my physical strength or knowledge, but because my whole country cannot access education. And I just want everyone to be happy, educated, and have a good life, and have good lives. More hands. Was there something while you were going through the process of your project that was particularly challenging for you? Yes, lear actually learning about Marvel app. <laughs> that was probably the most difficult because I, ne because I had no past education with it at all. I had to learn from scratch. I mean, once I learned how everything works, it was easy, but definitely that, either that or the Photoshop. Those are the two most difficult ones. Okay. Thank you. Con arigato. Thank you. Tra. Thank you. is concentration and autism. I'm gonna say it's, um, a lot of people with autism have trouble concentrating on one thing at a time. And I decided to try and work on little fidget cubes. I do not own the trademark and stuff. But yeah, little cubes for them to fidget with. So, well basically what I had at first was is, um, 3D print, the, the, printed blocks that have Velcro on them so that and people with autism can stick, the, stick them together and build them on top of each other. And the, this would hopefully let people with autism focus on one specific thing at a time. So well, um, another idea that I could do is raise money for autism research through um, selling sweet it's uh, at school or just wherever I I thought a good name for it would be like donuts for donations and we could also try doing events to raise this money okay, for autism research so there were quite a few problems that we had for example, um, someone broke the platform on one of the 3D printers, and that's what happened with the blocks. And, and sometimes the blocks would be either too big or too small. And sometimes there was just trouble with the 3D printers in general. Well, for example, I have... Um, so this is what happened with one of them. Some of them just didn't finish printing. But this is what first happened with the Velcro. It doesn't look very nice, but it's what we came up with first. And then we tried magnet hits in them, but I don't know where those are. A lot of stuff happened with the blocks, and, and it, it turns out magnet hits were the best option. And I just didn't get to finish them. So, so what's trying to be done it is, well, exactly what I have said. And it, it's supposed to be like you know, a bit of world building and in real life made out of blocks. It's kind of like a version of mini Minecraft in real life, except it's specifically for her people with autism and 
people with autism that need help um, focusing on one thing at a time. So I was thinking yeah, if we continued with the block idea, we could make them in various color, or is it make them different texture, or is all that kind of stuff. Thank you for listening. So, feel free to ask any questions. Yeah? So, wouldn't Velcro distract people around them? I definitely think that the magnets are the, are the better idea, and I'm, this is not going to be like a criticizing way. It's just like, so what idea do you think would work the best? Because, but because there are pros and cons of Velcro, same thing with magnets. So, with that in mind, what do you think? What idea do you think you're going to try to make happen if you're continuing this idea? Well, look, if you make the right calculations with magnet hits and you don't make the same mistake as me, where I accidentally faced all of them the same way so that they didn't stick together at all, well, if you don't do that and you calculate it the right way, yeah, then I think magnets would be the best idea, along with the fundraisers. Yep. Any other questions? Yeah? What originally got you started in the direction of focusing on this project? What was the problem that you were addressing? Or, or something that you connected with? Well, well, my brother has autism, and he really like hits the game Minecraft, so I thought, and he likes Legos and building and all that kind of stuff. So I thought, what if I could let him build in real life and connect to a bit of Minecraft to that? And plus, he has a bit of trouble concentrating on one thing at a time. So, any questions from the comments? Okay, nobody. Yeah. So, thank you for listening. Thank you. Thank you. No, Morgan, even though I don't have autism, that will actually help me focus because I focus on many things at once sometimes. Everyone does that. And that one. And the same if you can just do a presentation. I can send it to you, but it's on my screen. Here, it's on live YouTube, but on YouTube out of something. Um. Here, hold on a sec. Wait, music. Oh, and I also really like the, the elevator music. Okay, hold on a sec. Wait, music. Take a break. Grab a snack. Whatever. AAC live stream. It's not one of the top. Yes, that's the one. I really like those cats in the foot.
as red gifts. So essentially, our product is a metaphorical shield, but it offers legitimate protection from DDoS attacks. And um, these cyber attacks not only are very annoying from personal experience, but they can make you vulnerable to other cyber attacks that can steal all your credentials and even like get access to your bank account. Yeah. All right. So why this is bad? So. Um, we go into more detail in the future slides, but people get DDoS for multiple reasons, which, like I said, will come in the near future. But um, this is bad for multiple reasons. So people can lose work, they'll lose valuable information, etc. Which, yeah. all right, who does it affect? Like we said last time, it affects like it can affect very important people. Like people, people try to DDoS the Pentagon and get access to the Pentagon and all sorts of stuff, so they can lose like very valuable. Um, information that could be classified uh, and people who just like regular workers in offices could get DDoS and it can increase downtime. Alright, so why and what type of people do this? So generally when we talk about DDoS and where it comes from, we usually talk about it from actual little children. I know surprising a big attack comes from small children or younger children. So usually it stems from games. So when you are in a game, if you were to DDoS someone's, you, their internet would turn off so you can't have an advantage, so they're lagging or you can beat them in the game. So obviously it's not always children because like Ethan said, he, uh, the Pentagon was uh, DDoS multiple times, etc. So um, they're also adults and actual hackers. So they're actually trying to uh, get information, like do malicious intent, while um, the little children obviously are still doing malicious intent, but not as bad, not trying to get information, etc. All right, the product. Our shield is like, it plugs in via micro USB directly to your Wi-Fi router, and it offers 24 step protection, and if it doesn't, like if it fails, you get, compensa you get compensation, and if it just breaks, you have a two year warranty, so that's that, and um, yeah. All right, so why we decided to choose this topic. So we really, so Ethan and myself are very, very big gamers, as most people know. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, so as most people know. So we know what it is like to get DDoS on a regular basis, and we obviously do not like it because our parents get mad because our parents are doing very important work. Uh, let's say we're trying to do something in a game, we're just trying to have fun. Um, etc. And there is always that possibility that our information will be leaked. So this is why we decided to do this, because we wanted to try to solve this problem so other people like us can actually play their game, enjoy what they're doing, because they bought that game to have fun, so we want them to have fun. All right, that's, that's it. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah. This is a good question. Thank you for teaching me what DDoS are. Mm -hmm. Any oh, other yeah. questions? And DDoS stands for Distributed Denial of Service, which it sends packets to your router, overwhelming it and possibly frying it. Other questions? Um, how hard did you work on this? Like, how much time did you take brainstorming? Did you brainstorm it outside of school? Yeah, because yeah. originally we both had different project ideas, but they were both relating to cybersecurity. So we thought we would just like partner up and just do the research together. What were some of the ideas that you had for? Uh, we just want, like, one of my ideas was to just create a general software for all cybersecurity, but there's already so many out there that do their job. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, so, and then my idea beforehand was to have, like, a type of password that you need to access the uh, information, aka the IP address. So, yeah, that would all be incorporated in this. Um, what do you think the budget would be like, for you to actually create it? So, so to be honest, um, we would expect it to be quite high because the amount of power, so the amount that people will go through to try to do this malicious activity is actually crazy. So they, we would have to spend a decent amount. We have a question from the comments. Mm -hmm. So, well, Elmo worshiper said, 
is what inspired you to choose to work on this? Any certain inspiration? Okay, yeah, you know, Fortnite, no. Uh, so when we would play our games, so yeah, you know, when we were, you know, going try hard, we were winning, we were going to get, you know, first place, got DDoS, boom, etc. You know, just simple games like that, like Call of Duty, etc. Just games like that, that's really what got us into this. I'm a worshiper. All right. Let's yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I'm a worshiper. I'm a worshiper. Yeah, it's okay. Oh my God, it's a worshiper. Wait, they also asked if they have free V-Box. Yes, free V-Box. Just join my free gift card giveaway. What game do you want? All right. Hi, guys. My name is Jack Kim. Hi, guys. I'm Angela. And our project is The Power of Motion. So this project uh, aims to give people electricity uh, that, don't ha that, doesn't ha that don't have it so they can create their own. And we also encourage them to exercise using our products. So today, you will be learning the design, des the design thinking process uh, and how that affected our project. It is a process that many developers use uh, when they're creating a product. We first need to find a problem that fit our criteria. Um, and we decided on a problem that people without access to energy just can't do any every daily activities that we in the States can. So um, we contacted different organizations and asked them questions about what it's like and just um, how we can help. So this uh, this uh, th this uh, shows uh, the percentages of how many people don't have electricity in these uh, places. So in South America, more than uh, 72 or even 100 percent don't have electricity. And same in Asia and Africa, high amounts. Okay, so, so he now we have a short video to show some of the things that people can do and can't do without electricity and with electricity. Access to modern energy is vital to end poverty. It helps Abdul Rahim in Bangladesh run his welding shop, the Yave children in Bolivia study at night, and Florence in Kenya run her seafood restaurant. But more than one billion people still live without electricity. That's 15% of the world's population. Fortunately, innovative and low-cost solutions are changing this. A new report on the state of global energy access shows how the right policies, regulations, and incentives can help get solar power to homes and mini-grids that power rural communities. Solar power that helps Mohammed in Bangladesh irrigate his crops, and Vitalio in Bolivia light up his house. Renewable sources like solar are getting cheaper every day, more efficient, and easier to deliver to consumers. Innovative solutions like these empower communities and get us closer to our goal of universal energy access. To create jobs for women in Kenya, make streets safer in Bangladesh, and helps Yanath in Bolivia earn extra income. Energy access will bring opportunity for all by 2030. So yeah, that's some of the things people can do with electricity. And they wouldn't be able to do those things without electricity. Um, so we needed to find more about and more statistics about so um, uh, to create our products and to make them as effective as possible. Um, we use the answers from the different organizations to do this. Okay, so next we needed to ideate some of our possible products. So, yeah, so we started to ideate. So first we have a sh our shoe. So our idea was to put some kind of device in the sole that would capture the impact of the sole and it would um, harness it and create um, electricity. So then we have the trampoline. So our trampoline would um, use the bouncing motion um, from the pad right here, from the springs, 
to also harness and generate electricity um, for uh, use for use later. And then our final project that we thought of was our small wind powered uh, wind powered generator. So. Uh, it can clip on to somewhere in your clothes and maybe run around or just walk around or run around and it will spin a turbine and create electricity. So you can see all these three are based on um, exercise. So they can not only generate electricity but also get their exercise in. So after we discussed like our ideas, we had to actually create them. and. Um, we, uh, this phase was pretty difficult because we didn't know how to like what to do, which materials to use. And so um, it was hard to put into reality, but eventually we did. And here are the real life prototypes. So here's a trampoline and this is the shoe. Okay, so next we had to test our ideas to see if they're good or not. So we sent out a survey throughout our school and we got re results. So you can see um, the shoes were the most popular idea. Um, that was our um, number one choice too. Uh, the trampoline wasn't so popular. And then the portable gen uh, generator was popular because it's small and portable and you can carry it around, not like a trampoline. And uh, this was sent out to, uh, to all our school, middle school, and we got 26 responses. That's the percentages of how many people liked it. Um, thank you for your time and consideration. We would like to ask any questions, and you would, can ask us any questions. Yes, Jake. So wouldn't the fan make, if, some, if people have a fan, wouldn't they cheat? Because if you think about it, if someone doesn't like exercising, but, and there's windmill-based thing, basically. Because the, because if you think about it, a wind turbine is basically a giant windmill, or, and, or that one that you clip on, so they could just blow, basically, and then it'll make it spin. So how do you prevent that from happening? How do you make it so it'll only spin when they're running or walking? Or moving? Well, it, it encourages them to, it's not like we can't, we can stop them from, like just, it just doing it themselves. Them yeah, it motivates them, encourages them to exercise. Thank you. Yes, I like to say that both the shoes and the trampoline are very good ideas, especially since, well, especially at this school, like you have to walk around and do different classes. Is you have to walk around to get places, and I think it would be real. A good idea oh, with those shoes, and the trampoline could be a good idea just for fun. Yeah, and our shoes like serve a dual purpose. Like they're also they're obviously creating electricity, but many people in like places like South America and Africa and some parts of Asia don't have shoes, so we would be serving a dual purpose with the shoes. Uh, Ryan. How long would it take to generate like enough electricity to like do something with it? Um, we're not exactly sure yet. We don't know exactly what the calculations and stuff, but um, I'm pretty sure enough to help them. Uh, yes. Oh, okay. I have two questions, or actually a few questions. I have one question per product, actually. Okay. The first one is about the trampoline. How will you get the electricity from the trampoline to wherever you are. Let's say I, but I go up to your website or store or, or wherever you're going to sell these, and I say, I want the trampoline. How would I get the, and then I jump on it. How would I get the electricity produced by the trampoline to my house? Well, we'll, de we'll design it to harness the electricity so it just won't, it won't go anywhere. It'll just harness it for reuse. And how do I transport? Then how do I um, we would towers? have something that you know you can connect to oh, your so devices. We, yeah, but we haven't gotten that far in the process. Okay, and for next question for the for the shoe, is the same thing where it'll just mm -hmm. Will, mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Will um, will the thing be part of the shoe or will it just yeah? Be it'll in be, the be, be in the sole. It'll be in the sole of the shoe. Okay, and last but not least, this wait, never mind. It's fine. Uh, here's me. Um, how do you plan on mass producing or distributing all of your products? 
Um, again, we haven't gotten that far in the process because we haven't had access to uh, uh, those kind of resources. But we do hope to like maybe have some connections with the organizations that can distribute them and help us along the way. Um, Morgan? Okay, so I have a question, but we also have a question and comments. Okay. So, Lucas Bodner said, is when you generate electricity with the shoes, where does the electricity go? Uh, we yeah, answered yes. that with like, Jake's question. Is it, is it like, so it, uh, I meant like, where does it like store it? It's in, it's, a, it's in the soil. It's no, in I mean, it's where does it go after that? Do you like plug it in somewhere? Yeah, place? so yeah. we'll have various ports, like USB or... And you guys have like a place where it goes to? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Uh, Ryan? Um, oh yeah, so would the shoe be like uncomfortable since there is like the whole thing in the shoe? Like would it be harder than the um, shoe? We would try to make it as comfortable as possible. Um, but I think the uh, actual devices would be not um, like, yeah, it would be fine. Like, Morgan? Um, my question is, is so, well, um, with like the trampoline, in the, in the shoes and the power generator, is it going to be like into those machines that you see sometimes in movies where people take like, their bicycles and generate electricity out of like riding them but it's stationary? Um, yeah, kind of. Mm -hmm. But it, those are more like exercise bikes, the, the ones that are stationary. I haven't seen too many. I mean, I bet there, I'm sure there's some that generate electricity, but they're mainly exercise bikes. Yeah, most. Okay, any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Harrison Kay, and uh, I did a project on heavy sleeping. Um, I came up with this idea in a way where I, I, I was approached by it where I had to like, come up with a solution for a problem that I could somehow relate to and that I was somehow affected by. Um, so I have this, I, I'm a heavy sleeper where it really affects my day drastically. Um, I'll wake up at 8 o'clock sometimes and school starts at 8 o'clock and that's a huge problem for me, clearly. So my idea was to create a basketball hoop, in a way, a 3D printed basketball hoop that had a censored alarm clock to it where you absolutely have to get up, shoot the ball, and actually hit the, like, the sensor for, it, for the alarm clock to stop. Uh, every minute that you don't hit it, it the, that you don't stop the alarm clock, it will get louder and louder and louder and as time goes by, the paces will change just until you have to get up and change it. <coughs> um, how I came up with my idea. So it was, it was kind of weird and up and down in the beginning where I didn't know what to do. I ended up switching from projects to projects and I just thought about this, the one problem that I have that I face every day that most people just don't acknowledge, think that it's just a minor problem and people don't really think that it affects people's everyday lives, which in a way it really does. So this was the first step of my project. Uh, that was the prototype. So right here, we were going to add a box and a sensor, but um, I never actually got to get to that prototype part. But I hear, I can show you the part of it itself. So. Here's the prototype and here's a 3D printed basketball hoop. Um, this is going to be the lever and the whole like, mechanics are going to be right here, but I never actually got to that stage. But um, that was my idea overall and it had like a really good, like, I had a really good goal and I was really getting there. Just, the time was really an issue. Um, just, it wasn't really like a lack of products, it was just 
not enough time, as I said. Um, so here's here's an example of like something that people like, like about heavy sleeper. Like, my mom every morning will yell at me like to wake up, but I'll just it, it'll be like my mom will think that I'm ignoring her, but it's not that the person's ignoring you. It's that they just that they're like still asleep, but you can't really understand that. It's kind of, it's difficult to get across, but unless you are actually a heavy sleeper, it's you can't really explain it in a way for somebody who's not to kind of get what somebody that's a heavy sleeper is like make in some in some sort of state where they don't understand what's really happening. Um, this will uh, kind of end my project, my presentation, but um, overall I feel like this could help a lot of people. Uh, this could really help my life overall, and uh, that's my goal. Thank you. Questions? Um, okay. All right, so we have a question from Elmo Worshipper. What if you just suck at basketball? Do you have any alternatives? And what if you're a midget and can't reach? <laughs> don't don't get the hoop or grow. Um, <laughs> grow. Jake. What if you, what if you don't need something that'll wake? Because for, so here, what if you don't need something that'll wake you up? What if you need something that'll get you more energy in the morning? Because my problem is this: so during the night, nothing will wake me up. Like for example, my dad screamed when finding when he found a moth in the in my in the playroom in my house that with, which is a black with moth, which I'm not going to explain the whole thing. But I slept through that. But in the mornings, I wake up very easily, but I'm very tired in the morning. So do you have anything that's like that, except for coffee and stuff like that, that'll actually wake me up? That will like, wake you up? And yeah, instantly. Yeah, um, coffee takes it all day. It, so the whole kind of like, like point of like the basketball hoop, in a way, and like the alarm clock, was it's not just an alarm clock, it's like kind of like a motivation, in a way, where you have to like get up, walk across the room, and then like it's not just you have to hit the alarm clock, it'll go off, the motivation is like if you miss the first time, you're at that point where you just want to get it in. It's not really about getting up at that time. So it's kind of a mixture of wanting to get up and do something, uh, something active, and also wanting to get up and just turn off the alarm clock. Thank you. That's you're welcome. That's really good. Um, any other questions? Morgan. Have you thought about any alternatives for people who maybe don't like basketball? Maybe like a soccer version of it, it or something like that. Um, I've not thought of that, but I could try to think of something that like, incorporates soccer. Um, I'd uh, not yet though. No, I'm but that's definitely something that I will think of. Thank you. Jake, what's up? Actually, I might have an idea. I'm gonna talk to about it later, but can we do that? Yeah. Okay. Thank um, you. All right, thank you. I'll see 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 yeah, we get it. I just put it on an elevator and it was elevator, so it just takes it off so you might be okay. Hmm. Uh, we only have two watchers now. Okay, quick, quick. I'm trying to talk about like eight people watching this. All right. I'm just going to leave this. Thank you very much. Are you ready for this? Oh, the last one. That's the last one. Okay. What do I want to do? Wait, why don't I see it? I thought there were more people. Oh, never mind. It's laggy. I see it. All right, guys.
project. It's called Helpy. Um, right here. This is Helpy, so I'm gonna be using him to demonstrate a bit. So, so there's a picture. So what is Helpy? Now originally, Helpy was designed to be a humanoid robotic helper for various pet stores and adoption centers, although he could be used in many other scenarios other than that, obviously. Um, uh, but he has a lot of features that are meant for a pet store, or kind of like that kind of environment, like a messy environment like that, um, because he has features specifically for that. Examples like treat dispenser, um, ball launcher, some other stuff. So more detailed, uh, list on Helpy's features. So he has a humanoid design, obviously, and in the back he has a wheel to keep balance because there's a lot of weight there. Uh, he has two large motors usually with EV3, which is what he's made of. Uh, you only have one motor. I put two because he has a lot of features um, and you can only put so many wires in to connect so many motors to one uh, program block, so I put two. Uh, on his left arm, which is this one right here, he has four massive spinning motors, which look a lot like blades for fighting, but they're not actually. Um, this is actually meant for cleaning um, for windows. What kind of inspired me is because for a different class, we had to volunteer. Um, and I went to volunteer at an adoption center and they had us clean, and I kind of got the idea, like, what if you had um, a robotic helper that did that and also had, like, other features we'll, we'll get to later. So you just wrap a cloth around each one of these, and it, it will spin. Um, I'll turn them on so you can look at his features. Um, more of them, like, in action. And then on his other arm, he has another spinner, but the main feature is up on his head right here, this massive thing. Um, and basically what it does is, this was the original design actually. The whole project was kind of based around this, and I attached it to him, so it, it like throws balls for, for dogs. Um, and it has a treat dispenser, which will shoot little treats down for the dogs as well. So, because that's like his whole pet store environment kind of thing. And yeah, this whole contraption on his head right here, was actually the original project. Um, go to the next slide. Um, he was never originally a, a robot like this. Um, he had just this, this right here on his head. And um, the only reason he became was like this was because I was bored. I went, got some other pieces, and started putting together some stuff. And I put together two motors. And to me, it looked like an arm. I don't know if it looks like an arm to you, but I thought this looked like an arm. So I went and I made another one, and then I took one of these program blocks, put it in the middle, and made two legs, and I lay it flat down on the table. And I figured this looks a lot like a robot, so I started building them together and connecting his pieces together. And over time, he started to form, and I figured, well, I've wasted so much time on this robot that I may as well start to program it and implement it as part of my project. So it went from just this little treat dispenser um, to a full-on programmed uh, robot. Um, so, next slide. so it's just some more in-depth pictures of his uh, features. Um, and I can turn it on as well, show you some things he can do. So. This is just his uh, his shoulder spinner. You can move that. And his other spinner up on here. Obviously, if this went into stores um, as a product, it would be a lot bigger. And um, yeah, the whole, the whole thing, the whole project was, I just got the idea um, from working in that pet store. Uh, for a few hours a week. Um, I really thought, like, uh, the dogs, you know, they should get attention, but they don't. Like, I thought that the dogs would get the attention, 
and that you would actually like feed the dogs and help the dogs, but it was actually just like cleaning windows and cleaning the floors. So I figured, why not have something else to do that? And then humans can actually go interact with the dogs. An original theme for the whole project was so that the dogs got more attention. Um, and the reason that I'm so um, like connected to, to helping animals more is, you know, I feel like obviously humans, they have all their problems as well, uh, diseases and stuff. We've got to deal with that. People way off uh, in other parts of the world who don't even have houses or water. And uh, I feel like animals have those problems too. They, they lived here and humans come and like, destroy their habitats. Um, and that's obviously going like way off to wild animals. Um, but you know, even just like a dog sitting on the street, I feel like people kind of neglect them a bit more since we have our own problems. So that's kind of what started this whole thing. And I know it's just small, but I feel like it can turn into something really big. Um, so thanks for your time. Any questions? Jake? How will it be controlled? Like, will it be a button where, that you press on healthy that'll make him do the certain tasks? Will it be remote control? Well, will you attach it to the to your phone? Like that remote control or would it be voice acting? Yeah, he's not actually meant to be remote control. Obviously, I don't have the wheels on because I had to sit him up here or somewhere and that wouldn't have worked. Um, but uh, originally, I didn't actually finish the programming. It took forever. But um, originally, he just has sensors. He'll move around the store kind of in a random, or just anywhere, not a store. Uh, he'll just move around anywhere, kind of just cleaning things. Uh, he has a sensor, I believe, somewhere on here, or it was connected onto here. So he'll, he'll like, kind of just walk around all by himself, you know, like those uh, those vacuums that go on the floor, they back the circle robots, they kind of just go randomly. It's kind of what he does. Um, so yeah, he, he has two modes as well for the thing on his head for like throwing the ball and the treats to clean. So yeah, Morgan. Um, hmm. are you planning on making it like slightly AI? He where, or just AI in general where it's a bit bigger but wanders around pet stores cleaning it and giving treats to the animals. Well, yeah, that, that's kind of like the aspect that it would be, but when you say AI, I'm not thinking like developing its own consciousness, you know how, like I said, with like the vacuum, that's not AI, like it has its own uh, fake conscience, but it can go and do its own thing, wanders around, as long as you turn it on and put on the right mode to go and clean or go and play with the pet, and then, uh, yeah, if that answers your question, right? Is that, no? Any other questions? Um... Oh, Kevin. Was it hard to create, put all the things together, put all the pieces together? Actually, no. No? No. Uh, how did you figure out how to connect and how to... I don't know, actually. I just, uh, like, so obviously I built the arms, right? And I laid them flat on the table, and I just kind of made, like, a shape. They weren't connected at all, but I just made, like, the shape of a, of a robot. And uh, I just connected them together. And then I added the wheel for him to stand up so that I kind of had like a base. And then I just built onto that, okay. if that answers your, your question. Um, and then I added this on top because that was just lying here gathering dust. So, yeah. Any other questions? Oh, well, sorry, one more. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to wrap up. Sorry, um, I have a question. No. It looks kind of like to some people it might have a slightly threatening appearance. Yeah. So. Uh, Gotta work on that. I feel like it's the swords as well. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, maybe I can just spray paint it pink and that will help. Um, I don't know. It's just a prototype right now. I didn't really think of that actually. So, yeah. Okay. We'll work on that. Did Elmo worship We're going to finish up uh, actually yeah, because the camera is needed too. elsewhere for another production. So, oh, yeah. so how do I? Bye, everyone. <laughs> He'll take care of that. Just wait one second. Gentlemen. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
Thank you for watching our presentation. Thank you. Yay! So, lady and gentlemen, we still have 15 more minutes left in class. Some of what I Lucas, did you last semester was it is that I had the students think about <laughs> what they did. There's another question, but yes, that's there's one more sarcastic. question. What if we make an army of them and send them into battle against ISIS or something? Lucas, what is your answer? I'm a war support. Yeah. I'm a worshiper. Yeah. Gee, my answer is a great question. <laughs> okay. It's a gory, great it's question. Thank you. Uh, We're going to finish. I know Shayna. Oh. Oh. I know Shayna. Yeah. All right. Wait. Oh. Oh. Gentlemen, in the yeah. back. Please. You will be able to watch yours. This will still be posted up so that you will be able to Forever? go back and review it. Um, yeah, sure. No, no, no. Um, just a week. Here's the thing. Yeah, can we like not? Part of what I do is I have you learn from this experience. I want you to come away from this experience thinking, what could have I done differently to prepare? That's all right. We're finishing up, okay? Uh, what are the things that went well? What would I have done if I had more time? Okay. What was not something that's very subtly disgusting? I don't know what could be my best. Sounds like fart. Sorry. We're still live, dude. I did not know that. Okay. It's right here. We're about to cut it. <laughs> 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 